All right, welcome to our pregame versus Sexy Melodic for the 2012 August Draft Tournament. And last time I did this versus Maycar, it was pretty enjoyable, so I'm going to do it again and uh, think this matchup through, eh? So, Sexy, if you watched the draft video, you s probably noticed that he had some questionable picks um, right off the bat with Fortress in round one. Uh, round two or three, maybe, it's still good, but maybe not a round one guy. Um, Camera up was definitely a head-scratcher, and of course the big... The big one was Quillfish, which is actually UU, uh, which of course means that he's going to have to use that and Ludicolo. So that's two guys I know I'm going to have to go up against. We already know from previous videos that I don't have access to... Make that thicker, please. I had the same problem last time. Uh, I don't have access to these two guys, uh, and of course I don't think I'd use them anyway. So here's my lower tier quartet that I'm going to be bringing in every fight. They're just going to be there, so... Uh, let me just put a little separation there so we can separate between the tiers. Um, my initial thought of this before I started breeding everyone was that I was going to go double fighting with Ape and Machamp, and eh, I don't know that that's a great idea. Um, let's separate his guys into tiers here. Um, Mamo is uh, up here with the OUs, and Camerupt is down here with the NUs. So Magnazone's always a very strong po Pokemon to bring. Um, he's actually got some pretty scary options with his OUs, but of course he's only going to be able to bring two of them, and depending on which two he brings, that definitely alters things considerably, but at the same time it's stuff I need to be thinking about. Um, ultimately though, the only decision I really need to, to make is uh, I think I do want to bring Beat. Um, Beat's going to be extremely good. For, now, it's not going to handle Magnazone at all. It doesn't have Aura Sphere, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily trust it against it anyway. But, um, it would do a pretty good job against Fortress, Flinch Haxing it. Um, it would do... Well, it's got a, you know, Air Slash is super effective. One of the few things I have that's super effective to Ludicolo. Um, and Water Pulse is going to wreck Camera up if that's one of his in use that he brings and I'm also not really sure what exactly Grumpig can let me move Grumpig out of the way. Um, I'm not sure what Grumpig can do to uh, Togekiss either. At least uh, that's that effective to it anyway. Uh, no I don't want that. I want it to be a straight line please. Um, anyway so Beat's kind of really valuable to bring. Another thing I noticed here is that I actually have a speed advantage for once so that makes me think to go Infernape over Machamp. Infernape is going to be faster than any of his guys naturally, which brings up the distinct possibility of Scarf. And the two guys who are most likely to be Scarfed are definitely these two guys. Um, he's only got, I think, two options. Well, I, I guess this thing probably has quick attack, or ha it has access to it, I think. But uh, I think Quillfish gets Aqua Jet. And, of course, Mammoth Swan gets Ice Shard. Between the two, I feel like Hera has a greater chance to be Scarfed. To which case, you know, I'm going to have to... I'm not sure I'm going to play around that. Maybe try to get him using Mega Horn. If he kills something with Mega Horn, then I can send an Infernape, and I'm either faster or he's Scarfed onto Mega Horn. So, that could be a potential thing that comes into play. Um, Mammoth Swan... Um, as long as it's not Scarfed, you know, I'm not afraid of Ice Shard, certainly with Infernape. Um, it's going to hurt, but not, not too much. Um, as far as uh, Fortress, I I'm not concerned about Fortress whatsoever. I've got a Spinner who who handles him pretty well. Um, its most common offensive attack is, you know, Earthquake, which Claydol is not going to care about. And if it blows up, then, well, it blew up, so whatever. Um, I do have a Ghost also to go to to block Spin. Uh, he does not have a spin blocker on his team, so once I put rocks up, uh, they are up. He does have some options for some spikes, toxic spikes. Um, toxic spikes, don't care too much about them. I've got a spinner and a heal beller to remove their effects. Um, this guy can rest, so he doesn't care too much about them, and of course two of my guys levitate over them. Um, it would bother Infernape a little bit. Any uh, additional residual damage when I've got a life orb is not welcome, but... Eh, it's it's not the worst. It's not the end of the world, certainly. Um, as for Dodrio, which is uh, eh, I don't know. 
Um, I don't have any steel types. I, I actually sort of would have rather him brought a uh, star raptor to uh, some extent. Um, Infernape is of course faster than it. I don't think it's going to be scar for anything. Um, a lot of this is going to depend on what sets he picks. I'm definitely most afraid of Subsea out of Ludicolo. I'm always scared to death of Subsea because it's so good and I'm so bad at playing around it. Um, so that's definitely a concern. Some sort of Swords Dance set out of Quillfish could make him more threatening than he probably should be. And the OUs are just a big, a big question mark. I'm, I'm not sure what to, what to make out of these. Um, they're going to... You know which two he uses is gonna be gonna determine a lot of plays. Getting that information is gonna be definitely key. But um, I do know that Magnazone. I need I need to scout if it's got HP Grass. If it doesn't, then Lantern should be able to come in and you know break substitutes with Surf and just say get out Magnazone. Um, Reg Ice would also be a nice quick pivot switch there. The first turn he's in, see if he uses HP Grass. If he uses HP Grass, then it'll be, obviously it'll be neutral. If for some reason he goes for HP Ice, it'll be resisted. And if he just switches, then I'm going to interpret that as meaning he doesn't have HP Grass. So, um, I'm not sure what role Shadow Man's going to play here. Uh, I don't believe Spike goes through sub, so that's going to be on the, on the sub seeding. Um... You know, just having him as a ghost. Um, also, he'll be immune to any anything that stab from Grumpig. That'll be good as well. He'll be able to block spin, be immune from um, from fighting. Well, not being weak to dark, although he will be uh, susceptible to bug. Um, you also don't really want. I don't really want a toxic hair across because then that's just gonna boost him up with guts. So, eh, you know, Beat's not gonna be faster than him. I don't think. Almost certainly not, unless he's like no speed. Um, but he beat should be able to live a hit, I think, if it's not guts boosted, and get him with air slash or Infernape can come in and uh, he'll I'll probably need some prior damage to him, but a flamethrower should take him out if I can get some extra damage on him with you know somebody. Um, Claydol's not really safe; he's weak to Mega Horn. Uh, Reg Ice isn't really safe. Lantern can probably get a hit on him, but. He's definitely going to be in danger. Um, so the OUs are, which assortment he uses, I think it's going to be the the X factor in this game, um, and also what sets he's got on his UUs. I'm I'm not really overly concerned with his NUs. Um, I feel like Beat handles most of them, and I'm I'm just not too worried about Dodrio. So it should be interesting to see how it shapes up from there, and let's get to it. All right, so hope you enjoyed that pregame if you watched, and if not, welcome to our third battle of this TPX draft up against Sexy Melodic, and you know he's the one that had all the questionable, dubious picks, um, none more crazy than the Quillfish. Um, you know we got lots of jollies off that, but uh, uh, definitely some entertaining picks made some uh, made some laughter in the draft. But we're gonna start with Reaverbot here and see how these picks go in practice and we're gonna set up some stealth rock against Odrio. should be able to live one of any hit I would imagine and uh, go ahead and get some rocks up and we'll take a brave bird not a critical hit brave bird though major bummer there um, so he loses a good bit of life from recoil but I lose stealth rock and rapid spin for the duration of the game and that royally sucks uh, that puts me in a big bind that's all my utility gone from the first turn that sucks. So we're going to drop in a Flying Resist in the form of Flash Man. And he's got some ground types, so I think I'm actually going to go for a safe move, namely Surf. And and comes a ground dude who's 4x weak to it. And I get a critical hit. Does that make up for the critical Brave Bird? It might. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this guy's got full HP. It's 5-5 uh, five, five, and mine's got full HP. His doesn't. But uh, Anyway, he's going to drop in uh, probably the signature Pokemon of this draft, which is Quillfish. And that you know, seems a little suspect to me, as you know, it's entirely likely that I've got Stab Electric to hit him with. So I'm thinking maybe he's going to explode. You know, um, I, w I think he's got some other stuff that could probably take Lantern. He has to have Ludicolo. It's a UU. So it's, uh, it's the only other UU he drafted. So uh, I'm actually going to switch out here, and just in case it is indeed Explosion. 
and sets up toxic spikes and at least they get shadow man in non poisoned so I'm just gonna go for some damage with nightshade get taunted so it's a good turn to pick nightshade and now we're gonna have to stick with nightshade because uh, the rest of the moves are status moves so it sets up another layer of T spikes and we're trying to get the HP down there as uh, he can't explode or do anything uh, too devastating back I imagine and he's gonna go back into Dodrio, avoid the Nightshade due to normal typing, and Taunt wars off at a good time, uh, allowing us to stay in. But I don't know if I don't know if I want to stay in or not. Uh, this is gonna be the only chance I have to keep Shadow Man in because of the death of Claydol. It's gonna be the only chance I have to keep Shadow Man in untoxic, which he works very much better uh, if he is not toxic, obviously. Um, but I'm not sure what I want to do. I can't directly damage him. Um, I can toxic him, but that's like I just want to hit him and kill him. So I'm just gonna switch in Flashman here, take a Brave Bird, and takes it all right. And we can threaten back with dis either Discharge, uh, Discharge Surf, or Ice Beam are my options here. Uh, discharge certainly would get the kill. Ice Beam most likely would get the kill, and uh, Surf it's got the best base power, I guess, or I guess it's tied with Ice Beam Stab. Um, e any of the three would probably get the kill, so it's kind of just a, hmm, what might he switch to? Ultimately, I'm going to decide to go to with Ice Beam, and I don't know why. I don't, Looking at the rest of the stuff he's got, nothing is weak to Ice Beam, um, so Surf would be okay, and uh, if not, then just Discharge, I guess. But uh, ultimately, for whatever reason, I decided to go with Ice Beam, and he thinks about this for a while. I actually had to cut out like five minutes of think time. Um, right about now, and he's gonna go switch into Grumpig. Um, now, if you notice, Camera Up's an NU, and Dodrio is an NU. Oops, I think it was a crit. Must be Thick Fat. Um, and guess who else is an NU? Grumpig. So, yeah, if you re recall, this was a 2 2 2 mixed tier tournament, and he just brought three NUs. Um, as dumb as that is, you know, if you're gonna bring three of a tier, uh, if, you know, three NUs is probably the least. Are the most uh, innocent thing to bring, but uh, we just decided, you know what, we didn't get too far in this one, so we're just gonna uh, cancel out this one. I think he actually went ahead and clicked an attack, so he gets uh, credited with a win here. But uh, we're actually gonna move into a game two, so he can correct his team. Uh, you don't, I don't want to win on a technicality, so we're just gonna rematch this and see how that goes out. All right, so here we go with our second try, and since he's gonna have to switch out his team, you know, uh, it's not gonna be bringing three NUs anymore. Uh, we just decided to, you know, do whatever, you know, not say moves or anything like that. So switch up leads, switch up whatever it is we want. And, yeah, we're going to, so I'm going to switch my lead over to Togekiss, uh, over to Beat, um, instead of Reverbot, and see what that gets us. Uh, so here's the Hippo emote to signify that <laughs> we're rematching and we're doing not the same stuff. Um, so anyway, I see camera up and we do have water pulse, so I'm gonna go for it I don't think it'll kill thanks to solid rock, but uh, yep sure enough. It doesn't kill and I get it with a will-o'-wisp which blows away my lumberry not a great start I guess but uh, you know losing that lumberry certainly hurts, but uh, it's certainly better than getting clayed all one-shotted right off the bat so pushes in a magna zone trying to save the camera up for later I guess and water pulse we're gonna hope for some confusion here um, as we're going to have to switch out to somebody uh, else. And what happened? Oh, we get disconnected. So uh, adding to our troubles. But uh, we're going to super speed this. Get back on Wi-Fi. Get back on Wi-Fi. And this is going to become a recurring theme here for the next couple minutes, I'm afraid. Uh, but we're going to do the same moves. Uh, there is some potential for variance there. Of course, uh, confusion procs, miss pro uh, missing and all that good stuff. Um, so we're in a water pulse. Doesn't get him quite down as far. I believe it did in the red the first time. But uh, uh, he does hit Will-O-Wisp. So it's going to blow away my Lumberry. And we're pretty much back on track. I'm um, just going to go ahead and go through with a confusion or with a water pulse. And hope it doesn't confuse since it didn't the first time. And it does confuse this time. But he said, eh, whatever. Um, you know, I don't want to have to redo this too many times. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed in the game and see how much further we can get. And I'm going to switch into a ground guy, which is going to be Reaverbot. Fully expecting that he's probably got a hidden power. 
but at the same time, uh, I don't think it'll kill, and I've got to stab Earth Power if he does want to stay in. So I'm pretty content to just go for that. Um, it'd be nice to set up Stealth Rock, but I'm a little bit too threatened defensively. So uh, if he wants to take a chunk out of my Claydol, I'm going to take the entire chunk out of his Magnezone. So he does have HP. I don't know if it's Grass or Ice uh, or whatever else. Claydol's got a couple of weaknesses, I suppose. But uh, Earth Power is going to knock out Magnezone. And that's uh, pretty good there, uh, but that's not pretty good there. Uh, I chewed too soon. Uh, we get disconnected again, and we're going to again try to do the same moves. We see uh, Darkness and Andrew also from our division uh, are in battle right there. And I think I, I think I hosted that time, and I think he's hosting this time. And we get immediately disconnected, <laughs> so thanks, Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm going to host try hosting again this time. We got a little bit further when I hosted. So uh, we'll go with that and see how far we can get this time. And not too much to talk about here. Uh, we are going to do the same moves. So here comes Water Pulse. And yeah, Water Pulses. Uh, this gets it back into the red. Uh, does get a confusion though, and he hits himself a confusion. So I just decided to click run. We're going to redo that. Try to get him to uh, blow away my Lumberry because that is really significant for later. Uh, that's not something we just uh, do an immediate rematch. It's uh, better than having to disconnect. So I think that's that's what Andrew and I did as well. Uh, which is the immediate rematch. It's a little bit easier. A little bit of a, a laggy come out there. I don't know if you guys could notice that. But uh, anyway. Uh, and then the Will-O-Wisp misses. So we got to do this again. Um, so un un unlikely things are occurring. And yep, there we go. Immediate rematch again. And, oh, we get disconnected yet again. So let's try this once again, shall we? Gonna get, uh, he's going to host again this time, and we're going to see if we can get stuff happening and make a game out of this. And we get one of my favorite Wi-Fi glitches of all time, with just the white screen that uh, persists for a few seconds and then disconnects. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we are, however, going to be able to finally get our game going on this time. And hopefully it'll go smoothly from here on out. All right, so I hope from here on out there's going to be no more shenanigans occurring. So here we go. We're going to send out Beat. We're going to send out Camera Up. It's going to be a Water Pulse. It's not going to confuse, or else it's uh, going to hit through Confusion one of the two. I don't. It does confuse, but uh, he hits through the Confusion and hits the Will of So uh, since he's going to switch out, the Confusion is irrelevant. Um, doesn't do quite as much damage, but uh, you know that's fine. Uh, we've been through too much to quarrel over uh, you know a couple points of damage there. Magnezone does not get confused which is good so that's uh, one less thing we're going to have to worry about. So we're going to switch in Claydol and you guys have just seen the uh, series of moves that's going to play out right here. He's going to HP uh, Ice or Grass whichever it is. A little bit of lag here it's uh, made me think we're going to disconnect again but uh, we did not and T-Bolts yeah 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 and earth power and you no know, real reason to uh, I probably should have just played music for the last like six minutes or so good grief but anyway uh, yeah it gets, gets me down to 180 earth power removes the magnezone and that's uh, one of his OU's down so we, we've seen uh, one NU camera up and one OU in the form of magnezone good job we're finally gonna be moving on and doing something up to an even 200 HP and sends out Hera which is, you know, I can take the fighting, but I can't take the bug. So what do I want to do here? Um, I'm really going to expect Megahorn. And I figure, you know, I'm kind of fearing Scarf. If he's Scarfed into Megahorn, maybe it's going to be uh, advantageous to go into Buster Rod G. Um, you know, it's a lot of power, but I think Buster Rod G can, you know, take a resisted bug move and then maybe make something happen out of it. So... Takes a Mega Horn, takes it reasonably well, and then he activates Flame Orb. So that's good that he's not Scarf, but now he's going to be doing 1.5 times the damage, but he's also going to be slowly killing himself. So uh, I got a bit of a dilemma here. Um, I like, you know, uh, um, <laughs> I guess Flamethrower is going to be the most obvious move, but uh, he's going to switch out into Grump Pig. So I just go for the obvious move and play safe. Um, kind of forcing him to switch out, and yeah, it's most likely going to be Thick Fat right there. That did not do very much at all. Um, my Life Orb hurts, so I'm going to get out of here, I think. Um, there's 
Yeah, Grumpig's gonna uh, actually resists my entire move set: close combat, HP ice, and flamethrower with a uh, thick fat psychic type there. So I'm gonna switch out here, and I think we're gonna go into maybe beat, maybe Claydol. We're gonna go into Claydol. Yep, and he's uh, actually gonna pull a great move here. He's gonna double switch back into Reaver or back into Heracross, and now I'm in. A worse position than before because now I can't do the same thing. Guts is activated, so I'm gonna have to do something else, and or else uh, maybe sacrifice Reaverbot. You know, hoping uh, maybe he's gonna go for another move besides Megahorn. And uh, I don't have anything that's really gonna be that effective to hit him with. But I don't know. Maybe I can set up a Stealth Rock or something. I don't really want to switch in anyone and take a hit. Um, at the same time, I don't really want to lose my utility guy, so I think I'm going to click Stealth Rock here, and he doesn't pick a coverage move, he just goes straight for Megahorn, so what can I say, he got me there on the double switch, and now uh, we're going to have to see what we can do to come back from this. So, what's going to come in next, I'm going to think about it for a while, um, what do we have here, um, Sableye might be able to live something from full HP, he is uh, defensively invested. Um, but I don't think he's going to be able to recover up too much. Um, I, I, I hate to go into Buster Rod G, but I think I'm going to. It's the only thing that's faster. Uh, but I'm definitely not going to go for Flamethrower this time, I think. Uh, we're going to try to do something else. I think we're just going to use this as an opportunity to get a, to bait a switch and then go into somebody else. Probably, if he goes back in the Grumpig, Shadow Man's going to be a good option because it's going to be immune from his stab. Um, he hasn't shown me any moves. He just pu pulled it in and then pulled it out. Um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch into Shadow Man there. And, yep, that's exactly what he does. So uh, we're tied on good double switches here. Um, what exactly can I do? Um, well, we can Nightshade. Grumping doesn't have reliable recovery. Uh, we can Toxic. That might be okay. Um... And it looks like we're just going to go straight for the Nightshade, go for the damage. As a Quillfish comes in, which is Poison type, that would have uh, made any other move pointless. So best move I could have picked right there. And we see he has Leftovers, not Black Sludge, Leftovers, but, you know, whatever. Uh, there's no trick involved, so meh. Um, I think we're just going to be content to maybe, you know, he can't explode. Uh, unfortunately, once again, my spinner is gone. So he's just going to set up Toxic Spikes. And I don't really know that I want to go to anyone else to, you know, get in here before T-Spikes come up. Um, Ape's not going to be able to, um, you know, knock this thing out with uh, being faster. Uh, so I think we're just going to go for a couple Nightshades and get this thing gone is really all I'm looking to do. Looks like it's going to be a four-hit KO despite leftovers. And here he's going to Waterfall. Quillfish actually has some pretty decent attack. And Nightshade gets it down there pretty low. Uh, he is faster, and I kind of like to recover. You know, to uh, I think I would gain a little bit of HP there, but due to Waterfall Flinch hacks, um, I want to take as few of those as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and Nightshade with that, and just get this Quillfish out of here. Um, I think that only left him with one layer of T-Spikes, so I'm not going ha to have to deal with Toxic. It's just going to be Poison, which is can be better, can be worse. Anyway, in comes Camerupt, and if I recall correctly, Sableye has base 50 speed versus Camerupt's 40. So, I really don't know what he's thinking here. Does he maybe have some speed investment and think he's faster? Um, he's got to have under 100 HP, so Nightshade will definitely get a kill if I get the chance to pull it off. But I go for Recover instead, hoping that you know I can uh, live a hit from 75% or so. The Earth Powers, and I don't let Liva hit, so really should have gone with Nightshade there, obviously. Um, another bad play, and yeah, it's a kill that should have been going the other way, and then some lefties recovery on top of it. Um, so now I think I'm just going to go into the thing that, uh, go back to the, to the leadoff matchup, and just a drop-in beat here. Um, he is Sans Lumberry, but I'll be able to Water Pulse it, and I don't know. Nasty Plot would actually be a consideration, but uh, I felt like if it did that much, um, maybe it's... I, don't, I doubt it would be Specs if it's Will-O-Wisp, um, but I don't think I've seen Lefties, so... Yeah, we're just going to go for Water Pulse here. 
and either get this thing dead or get a hit on something else. Thinking about it for a while, I don't really know why. I guess maybe uh, considering an air slash. Magnezone's gone, so uh, that's the best thing to resist air slash. But, yep, we're going to just water pulse, get the knockout, and we've seen what? We've seen uh, Heracross, that's an OU. Quillfish, that's a UU. Um, we've seen Grumpig, so we know he's got Ludicolo left. Uh, and yeah, and in fact, Ludicolo should be the only thing he has unseen. Uh, wait a minute. That's not a Ludicolo. That is a Mama Swine. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a third OU. So, uh, sexy goofed again. Um, so we talk about this for a while. It's what this little wait period is. And, uh, ultimately, I guess he just face palms and says, you know what? I just screwed up twice. Uh, we went through a lot of grief with, with Wi Fi trying to get connected and stuff. So, Whatever, you can just have the win. I think it's what we decided uh, to do there. And, uh, however, um, just for the sake of, you know, continuing the game uh, on, until it disconnects the game, we decided to go ahead and play it out uh, just for funds. So, at this point, I've got the win in my back pocket, but, you know, we're going to keep uh, keep playing just for the sake of having fun with the game. So, go for Water Pulse, and I believe that's a Life Orb on that Mammoth Swine. Looks like it. So, I'm not going to be able to live another Ice Shard. So, I actually go into Buster Rod G. I'm honestly not sure why. Um, yeah, I guess because it's going to be faster. Um, it's going to resist Ice Shard, sure. But uh, I feel like from that low HP, I'm not going to be able to fire off an attack that's going to... Uh, you know, he's going to get me with Ice Shard, I believe. So uh, I just go, go into Iceman here, who takes Ice Shard obviously really well. And takes a superpower not quite as well. And uh, in fact, he gets a crit. I... Uh, it's debatable if that mattered or not. Um, the red eyes are certainly very uh, stalwart, but it was life orb from Mamoswine, so I'm gonna say it probably didn't matter. Dropping Buster Rod G, he doesn't have Stealth Rock up, just the uh, just the Toxic Spikes, which already happened, and uh, that's just to bait a Ice Shard or an Ice Shard as uh, we just go into Lantern to take no pretty much nothing from it. Uh, we do get him poisoned, however. So I think that's also the first time I dropped in Lantern this fight. So, uh, expecting a close combat here, but yeah, I'm, I'm at almost full HP, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to live, and I do. And we get a Surf off there, and it adds to the damage that Heracross has taken. And I think we're going to be content to maybe just sacrifice Flashman here? Yeah, probably going to be his best usage from here on out. Um, he's got, what, Heracross and Grumpig left, I think? So, we're going to drop in Buster Rod G. And I'm not going to Flamethrower for the kill. Um, because then he can just switch into, yeah, Grumpig and just get me dead, wasting a hit from Life Orb. So instead, I'm just going to Nasty Plot up, and I'm probably only going to get one hit from Life Orb here before it, uh, Poison's going to take me down. So I uh, just hit it with the plus two Flamethrower, and that does respectable damage. Um, so, yeah, takes me out with Psychic. And now he's, it's two on one, but Heracross is pretty much dead uh, he might he's gonna get off one more attack before burn kills him so it's gotta be up to beat to carry us to victory here um, he gets gets a psychic off doesn't do very much at all uh, but it does of course carry the threat of a special defense drop and since I have no one else to switch to that would be a big pain paralyzes me certainly a better prospect than getting toxic but uh, you know it does op open the door for him to come back or uh, I guess he's ahead, so he's not really coming back. But uh, it does open the door for him to win through a series of uh, you know unlucky para full paras like that right there, um, as well as special defense drops. But uh, I think in the end I should be able to roost and boost, you know, nasty plot up a couple times, and then uh, just make sure I'm at as much HP as possible when he goes down uh, to live a hit from Heracross, and then we should be good to go. Gets a crit, but beat, tanks it, lives it. Yet hard hat, hard hat, emote strip. Perfect, perfect time for that. And, uh, yeah, we're going to roost again here. Uh, just hope for no special defense drops. And, yeah, eventually we're going to come out on top of this, I believe. It's just going to be, do we have enough HP to live a hit from Hera? So, uh, uh, I guess eventually Sexy decides, you know what? Um, I already gave you the win, um, and this is just going to take too long. The only way I'm likely going to come out on top of this is a good series of hacks in my favor. So, uh, he just decides to run. And yeah, it's gonna do it for this video. It was definitely the weirdest game of the series by far, but uh, it was a game nonetheless. So hope you guys enjoyed watching and later days.